Dr. Fizz here on Gauss's Law. Now we saw this electric force equation in the earlier section. This is called Coulomb's Law. And in the metric system where you have meters, kilograms, and seconds, the MKS system, then the constant K, which is the constant that defines the electric force in these units, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Think of epsilon sub naught as a constant that determines the strength of the electric force. It's also called the permittivity of free space. If we compare with gravity, you can see in the case of gravity there's a universal constant, G, capital G, and K is our electric constant for the electric force. Now what physicists like to do is let one of these uh, masses be one, the small one, and the small Q be one, and think of this as a force per unit mass, force per unit charge, and when you do that, that's called the force, the electric field. Uh, for the case of the electricity case, and for the case of the gravity, the gravitational field. So by letting the little m and the little q be one, we get these two equations, where g stands for the gravitational force field, and e, the electric force field. And if you want to know what the actual force is, you multiply this g by m. So the force would be mg, and the force here you multiply by q would be q, little q times e. Well, let's look at a neat little thing we can do here. We can draw a sphere around the charge q and put it at the center. The sphere is a distance r away. And this electric field, which has a vector component to it is always directed away from the charge. So I use a little r hat, a unit vector r hat, which is away from the center. So now r hat, see along this direction here, which is usually your x direction, would actually be i hat, the Cartesian i hat. Now in Cartesian coordinates, i hat j hat for y, and you know, z, uh, z direction would be k hat. Those vectors never change direction. But when you use the r hat, the r hat over here would just be pointing away from q. Over here will be pointing up. Actually, it would be then the uh, j hat if this is you know your y and your your x. And over here, the r hat would be pointing away from the uh, uh, origin, which would be a negative i hat. So let's look at what we can do here with the area and the electric force field come up with a neat little equation. Consider a differential patch of area as dA where the r hat gives the direction perpendicular to the area's surface. This is a neat way to show the direction, the orientation of a piece of paper. You simply have a little arrow sticking out of the paper perpendicular to it and give that direction. So here we're going to integrate we're going to integrate the electric field dot dA and this means this dot product means I want the component of the electric field that is parallel to the little vector that defines the orientation of the of the area. Now you know in this case all the electric field force lines are radial. So we're going to um, have an easy case to work with here. Let's look at it. We have the electric uh, vector field is k cube over r squared r hat and dA is r hat dA. So each little patch of area on a sphere, the uh, direction r hat is also the r hat that we have for the electric field. So you point away from the center. So that means when you take this integral, you mainly go after the r hat dot r hat to get that vector part evaluated. This is your familiar dot product. The formal definition when you have a dot product of two vectors you take the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Well an angle with respect to itself has zero angle between the two so the cosine of zero is one and r hat dot r hat would be one since the unit vector has length one. So you have one times one times the cosine of zero we have one. So doing that we wind up with this equation here. We have k q over r squared dA and since k is constant the charge is not going to change and r 
squared is constant for our sphere that we've taken at a distance r away. So we pull those out and we integrate the enclosed surface area, dA, which may look a little scary to do, but it's not because it's simply the surface area of a sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So this is 4 pi r squared. And the r squareds cancel. And we get 4 pi times k q. Now, if we substitute for k, the 1 over the 4 pi epsilon sub 0, we have the 4 pi. We have the k being replaced by this arrangement here. We have the q, and you see the four pi's cancel, and the result is q over epsilon sub naught, and we are finished. That is Gauss's law right there, and that is the first Maxwell equation. It's Coulomb's law transformed into an integral equation. I would like to use this equation once because we're going to need this result in our next section, and that is to find the electric field for an infinite line of charge where a lambda is the charge per length, unit length. Notice that when you uh, make a surface, you're free to make the surface of your choice. And since I know by the symmetry, the electric field lines will be radial out from this line, I want to draw a cylinder. Because when I make a cylinder, then the E will pierce through the uh, surface that wraps around very nicely so that the little unit vectors that define the surface patches are always going to be aligned with the electric field. Now over here, the unit vector for this a patch of area here would point outward like this, but the electric field is perpendicular to that little unit vector, so E dot that unit vector is going to be zero, so I don't have to worry about this surface, and the same as of that surf for that surface. So when I do the enclosed um, integral the area, I'm really worried about the wrap around. If I have a can of soup, I'm looking at the label that wraps around. So we set this up. Here is the integral and the Q is going to be the Q that's inside of the uh, volume that we are enclosing and that's going to be for length L that's going to be lambda L, the linear density lambda times L the epsilon naught will be there and the area here that I'm interested in is 2 pi r, r is the, dist uh, the radius of this cylinder, 2 pi r times L. It gives me the surface area and the E is constant everywhere along there. So I get E times 2 pi r L and then when I solve for E I get the famous result that for a line of charge the electric field is an inverse R rule here the infinite line of charge kind of helps uh, get you this 1 over r form.